Okay. So I want to talk about King and Joy Boy and Luffy and Kaido. Recently, rereading uh, specific events from this interaction, I'm talking about King and Zoro, King and Kaido, and even Kaido and Luffy. It got me to thinking, there's no way King doesn't talk to Luffy after the war is over, right? Or after this battle is done. I mean, we're approaching the dawn. Like, the dawn is here. The dawn, not the dawn. You, you guys catch my drift. It's here. There are a few holding out hope. I think I was at first. That Kaido was not defeated. But now I'm starting to waver a bit. I'm not sure, but I'm just starting to waver. Anyway, the idea of Joy Boy is something that we've come to grasp in this arc. He was obviously important, just based off of Fishman Island and the hints and the connections. He was connected to Poseidon of the past. He made a, a promise to Fishman Island. It seemed like Joy Boy was a monumental figure of the past. And Roger confirmed that. And now we got even more confirmation that Joy Boy is the person that has to change the world now more so a title and luffy's probably that person but what does it mean to everyone else for kaido joy boy and again i'm waiting for a bit more context seemingly he felt like he was such a god the only person that he thought could actually beat him was the second coming of damn near a deity that's how confident kaido was in his abilities which i mean i'm not gonna lie i have kaido as probably the strongest character in one piece right now but anyway besides the point this joy boy figure is important to different people joy boy currently doesn't mean anything to luffy right because he's just trying to become the king of the pirates but of course it will be significant because he has a role to play now the reason why king's story was so interesting why we were so enamored with king was not only because he was cool and, and sexy right it was also because he subscribed to bda law right <laughs> nah seriously look down make sure you subscribe if you're not, hit that button. If you are, drop a like. But no, seriously. It was also because Oda kind of slow walked the Lunarian thing. Had Marco hint it. Queen damn near just said it. And I love the overlap with Queen and Judge and King and Sanji. I absolutely loved how Oda tied all those storylines together. But once we found out that King was a Lunarian and Lunarians were extinct, the Vivid cards revealed that King is 47 years old. But then to come to find out that Lunarians were the people that lived atop the Red Line before the Celestial Dragons, he got us to thinking. Not assuming every Lunarian is as strong as King, but Queen hinted that the Lunarians, they're damn near indestructible, right? But King is the last one. The Celestial Dragons wiped them out. Again, I'm always trying to figure out what side were people on, Emu. Now we know about Zunisha. The Lunarians, were they betrayed? Back then, were they on the side of the ancient kingdom or were they the gods of the world back then? The world seemed to be a pretty decent place back then, so I'm assuming the Lunarians were pretty decent people, but they were effectively wiped out. It's not clear whether they were on the side of the ancient kingdom or the celestial dragons, because even if they were on the side of the celestial dragons, they would still wipe them out because they don't give a damn. They're trying to be the only true gods of One Piece. We get more context with King because King, when he meets Kaido, he specifically asked Kaido, can you change the world we live in because he had been experimented on and put through a lot of tests by the world government and kaido responds that he's the only one that can change it for me i think that's why i'm so underwhelmed with kaido's backstory because back then there's some indication that kaido was trying to progress and create change of course change could come in different ways for kaido change basically would come through war which i understand completely war is absolutely necessary based off what we know in regards to the ancient kingdom i get it kaido but the values that i thought kaido would have to somewhat dumb it down to just him being a strong brute that was basically a soldier it minimizes it a bit which tells me that there's more to come king's commitment to kaido does not stand on the basis of him being joy boy as king would presume or as kaido thought he could be but in the midst of that conversation it seems like kaido was like king you, you really still think i'm joy boy and at some point it seemed like king moved on from that he's not seeking that from kaido anymore he just knows that because of kaido he's alive for the most part so he's just asking kaido to not lose continue to be the strongest it's almost like Zoro's dedication to Luffy. For Zoro, he's getting stronger for Luffy. And for the Straw Hats, their overwhelming belief in Luffy comes from the fact that he typically overcomes any situation. And so even though they're parallels in some way of each other, but took completely different paths. One is a swordsman that values the wear of the blade. One is like, yeah, I have a sword. I just use it. It's not really significant to me. They put their faith in their captains. And I think that's part of the reason why they grew so strong and their captains not losing elevated them. But now Kaido is lost. If Luffy lost to Kaido, I really wonder how it would impact Zoro's dream. Like how would Zoro react to that? Knowing that Luffy completely lost. That's it. No coming back. No joy boy shit, right? No ancient beating drums. That's it. Conversation for another day. But right now, King, how will you react to now Kaido has lost i'm not talking about one of those losses where he did it on purpose to get food or whatever even if he's not down this upcoming chapter he's gonna lose it's inevitable how will king respond because again it's not just about him 
being Jory Boy. It's also about him being the strongest there is. But now Kaido's down. Now it's confirmed that he's not Joy Boy. If King gets word that Luffy is Joy Boy and Luffy beat Kaido, you don't just let go of that initial dream about the world that Kaido wished to create, a better world. That is always ingrained within King. So I think King has a conversation with Luffy. You can't let go of your people being slaughtered. And for Luffy being Joy Boy, it's inevitable. He's going to go against the world government. King, will you join him? Kaido, will you join him? Because again, Joy Boy, as much as it's downplayed by both Kaido and King, it's significant to their character arcs. King threw it away because at some point you start to realize, okay, this probably isn't Joy Boy, but regardless, I'm going to follow him. I wonder how Zoro would feel if he got to a point and he was like, well, <laughs> it's clear that Luffy will not be the Pirate King, but I'm still going to follow him, right? Because their ambitions bounce off of each other. One of the major disappointments, well, not major, disappointment of mine personally, is King not having Conqueror's Hockey. Just thought it was perfect with his theme and his name, right? But what questions would he ask Luffy? Also, a conversation with Sanji. Where did you learn to do that? Fire combustion. Does he connect it to science? Because personally, I think King is one of those characters that Oda has been saving in regards to dialogue. In his backstory, we get some insight in regards to who he is, but I think there's more to come. He's somebody that cares about the world, I think. And so with his conversation with Luffy, it probably will touch on the Joy Boy thing, the world government thing. And maybe Luffy at that point becomes aware of some things he would need to do. Still won't care because he has people on his crew that should care about things like that. Bringing it back full circle with Jinbei and knowing about the sun god Nika and Robin knowing about Joy Boy and then the conversation Sanji had with Queen, Zora had with King. How is it revealed to them, right? How do we progress from here? I still think someone has to make Luffy aware of who he is and the responsibilities that come with that. And we're waiting for Luffy's answer. Oda has always stressed that every single individual, after you find out some secrets, after you find out information, for Roger, once he got to Laugh Tale, he made a decision and he understood whatever is needed to be accomplished, I cannot do that. That's beyond me. So for Luffy, I'm thinking the journal could reveal things, but also the Poneglyphs, right? What information does it hold? Typically at the end of arcs, we find out a bunch of information from different random characters, and I think this will happen here. Ultimately, I don't think Luffy cares. I don't think Luffy changes who he is, but I do think the people around him will somewhat guide him in regards to the decisions that he would have to make. King values ambition. When Zoro used Conqueror's Hockey, it seemed like he started to take him a bit more seriously, saying, so you intend to be a king then? And we go back to Zoro and Luffy's conversation about him being the world's greatest swordsman. I think something that's important in One Piece to, to kind of understand is that ambition, it can be bolstered by people around you. Part of the reason why Luffy keeps going is because of how much his crew believes in him. Part of the reason why Luffy's crew keeps going is because of Luffy's belief in them. So they bounce off each other, just like Kaido and King. In other instances, I'm always enamored by the pirate right hand dynamic and just how different they could be. Big Mom and Katakuri, just one of son and mother. Whitebeard and Marco, father or son. It seems the most fruitful ones comes from the partner interaction. Roger Rayleigh, Luffy Zoro. Kaido and King are partners, but King was so young when he met Kaido. It's a different in regards to their journey, but there is definitely a level of respect there. But then you have Shanks and Ben Beckman, where Ben Beckman is actually older than Shanks, right? So just like Zoro is older than Luffy. So those are some of the more fruitful partner or right hand and captain relationships. And I'm sure Ben Beckman's ambition and him having insane IQ as confirmed by Oda did push Shanks and help Shanks and aided Shanks throughout his journey, right? I think for every captain. You need an amazing right hand that can push you and challenge you in certain ways. Not questioning Whitebeard's ambition because that was not his intention. That was not what he wanted. But for Whitebeard, he was so content because a lot of his people and his crewmates, they were content in regards to what they wanted to accomplish as well. Zoro pushes Luffy all the time. And it seems like for King, he just supports Kaido. I'm so interested in these dynamics. I'll probably delve into that deeper in a different video because it is one of the more interesting things in One Piece. And I really can't wait for Oda to explore it a bit more with other right hand and captain relationships. Should you and Black? Beard. Can't wait for that, right? But even Joy Boy and who was his right hand? We'll figure that out in the future. But guys, give me your thoughts. What do you think happens after the war is over? Does King make a move? Does Luffy make a decision? Do we find out key information in regards to Laugh Tale? And where are we going, right? But guys, give me your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys all so much. Again, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>